Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome to my studio. You know I'm always absolutely thrilled to have you join me. So today I am super excited because I have a big treat for you. This entire oil painting, woo woo! It has been a hot minute I think since I've done a whole oil painting from start to finish on video for you guys. So I am really excited to share this one. Uh, this one is named Sage. That's actually the name of my friend that I painted, but I just felt like the name Sage, the word Sage, the the meanings behind the word sage just fit this painting so well, so I decided just to keep it as her name. Um, now the background I went ahead and did on my own before filming because it's mostly spray paint with some uh, leaves and different things to make the designs in there, and that's really hard to like videotape. I don't want to get spray paint on my camera, obviously, so that one I did on my own, but the whole rest of it I painted with you, even including these beautiful gold leaf accents, which you know gold leaf is like my new jam. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I discussed a little bit about some of the choices I make during the video, but you know, it's a lot of just music kind of hanging out. But anyways, I am just like so excited. I'm going to have prints of these available ASAP. So check the links because if you see this in just a couple of days, then they will be available. So anyways, I love you guys. I am so glad to have you. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you learned a little something, think about popping that subscribe button. It helps my channel and it makes sure that you come back over and over and over and over again. Mwah! I love you guys. Enjoy the show. So here are my original paints. If you need to see them a little longer, you can hit pause or look the links down below. I have it written out on my original blog post. And I'm just gonna kind of fly through and make these with you, but as a general rule of thumb when I am creating a skin tone, I normally like to start with about a range of five different tones from lightest to darkest. Now while I am actually painting, I will add in more orange or blue or purple or whatever I need as I'm going to kind of help match it. But this is what I like to start with. So I decided to just block in and give a little texture to Sage's underlying hair. That way it would be nice and dry by the time I come back to it later. A good rule of thumb is never to paint an object purely white, even if it looks pure white. Even though you think that that's what the object is, there's rarely anything that is completely without a warm or a cool hue in nature, much less would you want that on your painting as it will look stark and garish to the eye. This has actually been slightly tinted with a warm yellow that matches the inner core of the plumeria and just helps to make it look a little bit more realistic and less stark. Plus, if you ever need a tiny pop of white to show moisture on the lips or a sparkle in the eye, then that is what will stand out most of all, just like you would want it to. Fun fact, I secretly absolutely love painting and drawing ears. I don't know what it is about it. I just love to explore all the little folds and shadows and creases, so I've actually painted and drawn a ton of ears since I was in high school. Anytime you are painting something with a stark contrasted line, you want to give it the tiniest bit of a blur. Even if it is a very sharp line in real life or from photo or whatever, you still want it to have just the tiniest bit of a haze. Even when I'm doing one object on top of another, such as these straps on her much lighter skin. Now you would think that you would want the strap to have a really sharp line to really pop off of the skin, but in fact it's the opposite is true. Some of the best painters, the best masters, know how to slightly blur their edges and that just sort of makes for a more continuous shape. You'd be surprised, but our eyes see things a bit more hazy than you would believe. Even for folks like us with 20-20 vision, you want things to blend together ever so slightly and it will make a huge difference in how realistic your work looks. So as I was saying earlier about mixing up your five tones but still adding things, I have definitely been adding other 
bits to my paint. I've been adding a little bit more yellow up top. Down here at the bottom, it got pretty warm, so I used a warm blue along with a little purple, and then over in this shoulder blade, it was quite orange. There must have been some warm reflective light, so I definitely added a bit of my cadmium orange and um, a little terra rosa for right under the shoulder blade. And now here comes the fun part. So in order to paint these insane shadows, which was really honestly kind of very meditative, and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I thought it was going to be pretty tedious, but it was fun really having to look and pay attention. Obviously, I did a rough outline, but there was a lot more detail that I had to pull out as I was painting. And it was fun. It was very meditative. It was interesting to see how the shadow shapes play around the curve of Sage's shoulder because it's not like I was holding this doily up to a flat piece of paper. This is a unstable object be casting a shadow on a rounded object and so the distortion it made just makes for such a unique look that I'm just I'm loving these shadow shapes no matter how long they do take me to paint. Now, as I was saying earlier, even as stark as these lines look, I go through and make sure that the dark and the light blur just ever so slightly right at the end. And I actually have kind of broken new ground with myself on this painting because I am trying a new technique of really bringing the viewer in. So, as we all know, things that are closer to you are much clearer things that are farther away are much blurrier. So with this painting, I am attempting to make the bottom part of her shoulder blade, which you're seeing right now, all the way down to her back, less in focus so that it looks like she is farther away from you with that part of her body, which she is because this is taken from an above angle. So I know the top is slightly cut off on this one, but as you will see, just by the look of that lace and by the top of the shadow, you will see that the bottom part starts to come in nice and tight as my normal painting is and then I will go through and actually loosen it all up and just kind of basically smear and smudge it around till I get a hazier look of a far away object. There is a name for this kind of painting in classical painting. It's called trompe l'ole. It is a French term which basically means to fool the eye and a lot of muralists, especially classical muralists, when they were painting either uh, faux interiors, like as if it was a regular room that they were painting columns or whatever in, or when painting landscapes, um, again with murals. Um, you do it in all kinds of paintings and work, but especially the old muralists were the ones who really got it right. They would paint false busts and other false sculptures onto blank walls. So here is my first Trump Lole attempt and you'll have to let me know how it looks when you see the completed piece. As I'm sure you can see how fuzzy and blurry and out of focus the cloth and the bottom of Sage's hips are. Um, and I'm actually going to be attempting to make these flowers sort of mid-range focus. So if you notice, I'm putting detail in them, but I'm trying not to get too hyper detailed because I would like them to look like they're kind of floating sort of in between her upper shoulders and her lower hips. And if I get this right, I would love for them to look like they're just above Sage's hips. I think it's going to work. <laughs> we'll see.
curls, curls, curls. Me, oh my. It was quite a pleasure actually painting all these curls. So whenever I paint hair, whether it's curly like this or long straight wisps, I use a very long, thin bristle paintbrush. I want something very soft, like a size zero or smaller, super tiny and very long. And I use a mixture of my terpenoid, medium and paint to make a nice thin paint so that it'll glide on almost like a watercolor and that just makes super smooth curly lines. All right, yes, you know what time it is? It is gold leaf time. So this is this good metal leaf adhesive set that I got from Dick Blake that I love so much. And as you can see, I made some light marks on my linen and now I'm going back over them with a very ultra fine paintbrush again in order to make very nice clean lines. And then you wanna let everything dry for about 30 minutes before applying your gold leaf and just check around for links because I have a whole video just about how to do this super simple process. So what you think friends? Did I successfully pull off the Trump Lole that I was hoping for? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Thanks guys, can't wait to see you next time.